So Ian, you're senior lecturer in geochemistry. Can you tell me a little bit about your research and how you got into that particular field? Yeah, I'm, I'm a geochemist. That means I like to study the chemistry of the Earth and I'm particularly interested in the, the chemistry of the Earth's past and what that can tell us about the kind of processes, environments and change that went on throughout the Earth's history. So you've mentioned the past. Why is it particularly important to understand what happened in the past? Well, a really good example is that at various points in the Earth's history, it's undergone periods where it's warmed up very rapidly. Now, that's very similar to what scientists believe is happening at the present day. But this time, we're worried that it's us as humans that are causing that change. So by studying the past, we can try and see how the Earth responded to that change at the time. How did you get into this particular field of research then? I went to university to study geology, um, but I also happened to like chemistry, uh, and I gradually learned that I particularly liked the, the combination of the two, finding ways in which I could tease chemical fossils out of the rocks uh, that would tell us a lot about you know, the history of the Earth. So students joining us now new to science will be doing the general uh, natural sciences degree. Will they have opportunities within that to study a particular pathway like you did? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the beauties of natural science is it gives you that flexibility. You can you know, specialise or pursue your own particular interest. If that's chemistry, you can pursue chemistry. If it's earth sciences, you can pursue earth sciences within it. Or if you like to do a combination of the two, then that's fine too. So how soon would students then be able to make those kind of choices? Um, they don't have to make a decision straight away. Um, they can study the level one modules, find out what you know, particularly interests them, uh, find out what they're particularly good at, uh, or it might be relevance for their career, uh, but the decision doesn't have to be made straight away. So what particular aspects of teaching have you been involved in and, and has your research fed into that? I think my own research has, has informed a lot of the teaching I do. I, I've taught on level one all the way through to level three. I've taught on uh, modules involving astrobiology where I'm interested in the very early Earth. I've you know, written in modules where we looked at mass extinctions. Again, my interest in the Earth's past has, has fed into that module. Do you think that it's one of the strengths of the Open University that our research excellence feeds into our teaching in this way? Um, absolutely. We want our students to get the best possible science teaching. That means the science is up to date, current and informed by the research that we do. Can you tell me about a particular piece of research that you're involved in at the moment that you're excited about? We're in the midst of studying a period of the Earth's history right after the dinosaurs became extinct. So they've gone. So we're interested in how the Earth responded in this period immediately following right. that mass extinction. And we're studying, in this case, uh, a core uh, of rocks that we've obtained from the Baltic impact crater in Ukraine. That crater has a record of lake sediments covering about 500,000 years immediately after the dinosaurs disappeared. It's an immense record of a, a very interesting period of the Earth's history. So when you've got this core of sediments, what kind of things are you looking for in mm. the sediments? Oh, it's absolutely surprising how much information you can get. You know, there are little pollen grains in there that tell us what the plants around the area were at the time. We can tease out chemical signatures that tells us how the carbon in that lake responded to the changes that were going on when the sediments were laid down. So does looking at that sediment tell you something about the atmosphere then all those millions of years ago? That's one of the key questions that we're trying to answer. If we can get the right information out of these sediments, we can try and estimate how much carbon dioxide there was in the atmosphere at the time what impact that had on the Earth's climate. 